The holiday of Shavuot, which begins this evening, celebrates the receiving of the Torah on Harsinai. The Pasuk says, Vayichan Shom Yisrael Negedahar, that the Jewish people camped by the foot of the mountain to hear the word of Hashem. And the rabbis point out, as many of you know, that Vayichan is in the singular to highlight that we were at that time as a prerequisite for receiving the Torah, Ki'ishachad Belevechad. We were as one person with one heart. Rabbi Asher Weiss points out that Ki'ishachad implies physically together, while Belevechad suggests spiritually bound with one another. And that during this time of this pandemic, these last couple of months, we sadly, unfortunately, have not been able to physically gather together in person. And this has been very, very difficult. But we've come to realize perhaps more than ever that we're belevechad, that we're interconnected with one another, that we care for each other, that we're figuring out creative ways to do chesed for each other in ways that we never did before. And so even though we're not ki'ishechad, but we're belevechad. We're not ki'ishechad on this holiday of Shavuot, learning together and davening together in shul, but we are spiritually connected with one another. And as we reemerge from this tunnel, as we open up society again, and as we get back together with one another, hopefully soon, we have to make sure that as we go back to being ki'ishechad, that we have to carry forward that sense of belevechad, that we have those bonds and that care and that sense of responsibility for one another because we are one heart interconnected. The Pasuk says that the Jewish people that they camped at the foot of the mountain. And the rabbis found an additional interpretation to this Pasuk because could, could be at the foot but also could be underneath the mountain. And the rabbis presented an iconic image of God holding the mountain over the Jewish people and saying, if you accept the Torah, all is hunky-dory. But im lav, sham furatchem. If you don't accept the Torah, if you don't submit to my will, then things are not going to turn out well for you. And the question that we have on this medrash is that it seems so harsh and coercive. God is threatening and intimidating the Jewish people to accept the Torah. It also seems to go against the declaration of Nasev and Ishma, that the Jewish people, on their own initiative, decided to accept the Torah. There's another medrash to that same pasuk of Aidatsu Vibetach Ahar that provides an additional dimension to the conversation, to understanding our relationship with Hashem. That, that we were underneath the mountain. So the Medrash says it connects us to the Pasuk and Shira Shirim of Yonati Bechagvei Hasela, that the dove was in the cleft of the rock. Why does the dove seek shelter in the rock, in the cave? And the reason is because the dove is seeking protection from the elements, and that's why it goes into the cleft of the rock. And what the Medrash here is suggesting is that God placed the mountain above the Jewish people not to intimidate the Jewish people, but rather to protect the Jewish people from the elements. It was an expression of love that God has for the Jewish people by putting the mound over them to provide shade for them, to protect them. And perhaps both images are necessary. That on the one hand, you know, Shavuos is chatzil Lashem and chatzil Lachem, as the rabbis say. It's half that's dedicated to Hashem and half for our enjoyment. And so one dimension of our relation with Hashem is that we have to submit to the authority of Halacha and Torah. And that's the, the transcendence of HaKadosh Baruch Hu and the sanctity of the Torah. But the other dimension is that we keep the Torah because it brings warmth and beauty and protection to us. At difficult times, especially at turbulent and unusual times like these, the Torah is an anchor that we hold on to that provides protection and guidance and strength as, it, as we get through these troubled waters. So it's, we submit to the authority of Hashem, but it brings also beauty and compassion and warmth and shelter and protection to our lives. But it's not just that the Torah provides warmth for us, but then we have to turn and pay it forward to others. Rav Aaron Soloveitchik points out that the, the fire at Har Sinai was different than a regular fire, the fire at Harsinai was like the fire at the burning bush in that it did not consume. Rav Aaron Soloveitchik says that the, quoting Rabbeinu Bechaya, that fire has three different characteristics. It creates light, it brings warmth, but also consumes things that are in its path. 
and that the fire at Harsinai, like the fire at the burning bush, only had two components. It was warmth and light, but it did not consume. And the message Rav Aaron Soloveitchik suggested is such a powerful lesson for all of us, which is that the Torah that we observe, when we live according to the life of mitzvot, that it's always to bring warmth and light to others, but never to negate and never to act in a condescending way towards others. Even if another person might have a, have a different approach to Judaism or is not observing the mitzvot according to the standard that you believe in, so it doesn't make it right because we hold ourselves to a certain standard and we have to follow the mitzvot to the degree that we're able, but we see from the fire at Har Sinai, which is that when we keep the Torah, it's never to bring other people down, never to consume or destroy, but always to bring warmth and light and to bring other people up. Rabbi Benji Levine tells a beautiful story about how he was once invited to yeshiva in the north that was making a dedication to his grandfather of Arya Levine and to his family. And he was the keynote speaker of the evening, but the morning before the event, he wasn't feeling well and it was raining and the yeshiva hadn't arranged a taxi for him. And so he called up the school and he spoke to the assistant principal and mentioned and brought to her attention his predicament. And she said to him, Rabbi, you're the keynote speaker of the evening and what are we going to do if you're not able to make it tonight? And he hung up the phone and he was so upset because he was expecting the administration to say, okay, we'll pay for a cab or to say, okay, yeah, of course, we'd love to see you tonight, but we understand that because of your physical condition and you're not feeling well, then you're not able to make it. And he was very upset about it. And he was thinking about maybe not even going to the event because he wasn't feeling well and it was bad weather. And he was really upset about the phone call that he had had with the assistant principal. But he decided that this is, you know, his, his family has been involved in it and in honor of his grandfather, he decided to go to the event and to speak. But he really wanted to convey a lesson somehow to the assistant principal, but for the whole audience about what had happened. What did he do? And this is what he decided to do. And this is the story that he shared, that he gave the speech and he shared his Dvar Torah. And then he said about the fact how this yeshiva follows the ideals and values, greatest values of the Torah. Because that morning when he wasn't feeling well and it was raining, he called up the school and he spoke to the assistant principal. And he shared with the audience how that when he said that it was raining and he wasn't feeling well, how amazing it was that the assistant principal said, Rabbi, your health and safety are paramount. Yes, we'd love to see you, but if you're not feeling well or if it's inclement weather and we'll arrange a, a car service, but we understand if you can't make it. And this kind of yeshiva, with this kind of administration that cares so much about other people, even at a sacrifice for itself, that's the yeshiva I want to be associated with. And that's the yeshiva that we can all be proud of. That's the speech he gave that evening. The next day, of course, the assistant principal called him and said, Rabbi, thank you very much for conveying that lesson to me. I, apol I apologize for the way I spoke to you yesterday morning. And you, and you spoke to us in such an uplifting way um, that was an inspiring message to me and I'm sure everyone else. Let us carry forward that message that as we strive for greatness in Torah, as we learn Torah, to remember that we're belevechad, we're interconnected with everyone else in our community who we can see this Shavuot, and that hopefully when we get back together to Ishechad, we're going to carry forward that belevechad, and that HaKadosh Baruch Hu's relationship with us is twofold. He places that mountain above us to say that we have to submit to the authority of Torah because it's best for us, because that's what it means to be a Jew. But also the mountain is above us like a dove in the cleft of the rock, providing protection from the elements. We have a relationship with Hashem that brings us beauty, compassion, and warmth. But that warmth from Hashem has to now be carried forward in the way we relate to other people, just like the fire at Harsinai brings warmth and light that doesn't consume, we should always, the way we speak to one another um, and the way we act with each other and the way we relate and think about one another, it should always be bringing light and warmth and uplifting and elevating others 
and never insulting, demeaning, or condescending uh, in the way we speak to others. And if we do that, in Yerz Hashem, we'll gather together, Ki'ish Echad, Belev Echad, sharing Simcha in good health, with a strong relationship with HaKadosh Baruch Hu, and an even stronger relationship with other people as well. Chag Sameach and Shabbat Shalom.